Welcome to the lesson. We're going to look at DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. We're going to focus on defining DHCP, analyze normal DHCP traffic, look at DHCP problems, packet structure, the boot P DHCP statistics. DHCP enables clients to obtain IP addresses and other configurations in a dynamic manner. It's implemented on IPv4 and 6, but the last version is completely di completely different. DHCP is based on BootP, an earlier version of this protocol. This is why the display filter for DHCP is BootP. It uses UDP for connectionless services for numerous configuration options. The default port for DHCP are 68 for the client and 67 for the server. Normal DHCP traffic depends on what the information is the client requests. When the client's booting up outside lease time, you'll see the following pattern. Discover, offer, request and acknowledgement. When the client's still in lease time, just the sequence request acknowledgement is used. There's eight different types of DHCP messages. Discover is used to locate DHCP servers. It's a broadcast packet with a source IP address of all zeros. This is because the client does a, doesn't have an IP address, so it's assigned outside lease time. Both the MAC and IP destination addresses are broadcasts. Offers are sent by the servers with offers of parameters. The destination IP is one of the server offers to the client to assign. Requests are client messages which can be used to decline other DHCP offers and request configurations from a single one. This confirms a previously allocated IP address or it can be just extending the lease on a particular address. The source IP is still all the zeros. The MAC and IP destinations are broadcasts. Decline messages are used by clients when they detect that the assigned IP is in use. This is detected with the gratuitous ARP. DHCP acknowledgements are sent by the server with the configuration parameters to confirm the client's request. Negative acknowledgements indicate the client's address is incorrect or the client's lease has expired. DHCP release is sent when the client wants to cancel the remaining lease time. DHCP informationals are sent by the client asking for additional configuration parameters when the IP address is known already. During the address request, the client obtains the following time values. Lease time, renewal time and rebind time. Lease time defines how long the client is allowed to use the IP address. The renewal time is 0.5 times the LT and rebind time is 0.875. At T1, the client moves to renewal state and sends the DHCP unicast request to extend the lease. If the server answers with an acknowledgement, the client returns to bound state. Otherwise, the client sends requests at intervals equal to one half of the remaining time until T2, down to 60 seconds. If no answer is received until T2, the client enters a rebinding state and the request is sent to the broadcast address. If an acknowledgement is received, the client returns to its bound state. If no answer comes until the LT is reached with the same one half of the remaining time intervals, the client moves into an initialized state. It then locates DHCP servers with a discovery message. Most systems use sticky IP addresses, remembering the last assigned IP and requesting it next time. DHCP uses broadcasts, so either the DHCP server or relay must be in the same network segment with the client. DHCP relay forwards messages between clients and servers. Typically, DHCP can cause problems if you have a statically assigned address in your network and the server is not uh, configured to exclude it from the IP address range. Some servers detect this automatically with an ICMP echo to the address offered. Most often, the, cl the client detects duplicate IPs using ARP. This way, after the DHCP acknowledgement, you will see a DHCP decline message. Most often, 
uh, DHCP uses variable length packets. The message type or opcode identifies the message type. Hardware type is the same number used in ARP packets. The value 0x0001 indicates an Ethernet address. The hardware length field becomes redundant. The hops field is used by DHCP relays to know how many networks should be crossed. The transaction ID is used to match requests with responses. Seconds elapsed is rarely calculated and shows how many seconds passed since the client began the request. The boot P flags define whether the client accepts unicast or broadcast MAC um, responses. The first client IP address contains the IP address of the client after it was assigned or the preferred IP address in case of a sticky IP. Your IP address field, field is filled with a server which offered the IP address. The next server IP is the DHCP server address if a relay is used. The relay address is written in the next field. The client MAC address field is self-explanatory. The server host name and boot file name fields are optional. The magic cookie indicates what type um, of data follows. For DHCP we have this value. Options provide numerous configuration parameters. Some of the most used ones you can see in this table here. For a complete list, check the IANA website. To capture DHCP traffic, you can use port 67 or 68. Each of the requests of response contains both ports. Display filter for DHCP is boot P. Other useful filters would be uh, for D discover messages, DHCP containing a, a specific MAC address, a message with a host name value, or with a relay agent, and a DHCP with the client's IP address. To generalize DHCP messages, go to Statistics, DHCP, Boot P Statistics. So we've learned about DHCP and normal traffic, problems and packet structure, and some other topics. Please analyse some packets for yourself.